Just the seventh start of the season for Fry, and on a picture-perfect night in Northwest Arkansas, we are underway. Game one and 98 <laughs> out of the gate. Let's go. All right, then. He's going to live 95 to 98. Could show you a little bit more, and he's had the ability to carry velocity this year. Ball and a strike to Fry. Here's a look at his breakdown. Yeah, fastball slider primarily. He'll show you a few change-ups. Against lefties, it's about 50-50 fastball slot. Right, back to 98. In this league, and with that kind of stuff, the first comparison is the last year's number one overall pick, Paul Skeens, who, of course, led LSU to a national championship, but did it from the right side. Opening day starter is Smith for the second straight season for Arkansas. Hogs haven't had that since Blaine Knight in 17 and 18. And he's already got a couple of wins against LSU, including one out of the bullpen. And a strike three called to sit down Ethan Fry. A backdoor slider to right it worked there for Ethan or against Ethan Fry. Went back to back sliders, missed with the first. Comes right back with this one as if it's not hard enough to hit Hagen Smith. Throw shadows in for the first half hour or so of this game. Gets even tougher, even tougher early for these LSU hitters. So here's right fielder Josh Pearson. 267 average with four home runs for Pearson Jr. from West Monroe, Louisiana, who's coming off of a three for 12 weekend against Florida and catches just a piece of it. Nothing in one to Pearson. It's on the Baton Rouge regional team last year on his way to Omaha. And a fastball misses up, one ball, one strike. What's the biggest difference for Hagen Smith this year versus last? I think consistency specifically with the fastball. Um, I was talking to Matt Hobbs, the pitching coach of Arkansas, before this game. That's the one thing he pointed to is the misses are tighter. And so you get more chase on balls that may be just off the plate this year that last year was six, eight inches off. That's why those swing and miss numbers are so high this year for Hagen Smith. One, two to Pearson. Back to back K's, one look and one swing it. LSU is historically a patient offense. That's what Jay Johnson's clubs always are. The problem with being patient is if the other guy throws strike one, strike two pretty quick, patience goes out the window. Then you're going to start trying to protect. First two outs of the game, both punch outs for Hagan Smith. So here's a big time matchup Tommy White and Hagan Smith. Seven home runs in the season for White. First pitch strike. By the way, opposing batters with two outs this season are one for 28 against Hagen Smith. The numbers are a joke. White midweek against Southeastern on Tuesday night went two for five with a home run. He was only one for 12 in the Florida series last weekend. And he launches this one on a line to right center. Wilmsmeyer makes the play. Three up, three down, including a couple of strike a bit later, but a big shift for LSU this weekend. Thatcher Hurd is back to the bullpen after being a starter. And if they have a chance to win this game, you could see Hurd get some significant innings. Coleman faces Peyton Stovall to lead things off and delivers a first pitch strike. Stovall hitting 310 with three home runs. Junior's driven in a dozen. Dave Van Horn calls him best defensive second baseman in all of college baseball. And they missed him with an injury last season and then beginning this year. One of Arkansas's three captains. And three pitches to sit down Stovall. Coleman dials it up right there. His average fastball this year is about 91. That last one, glove side, sticks it. You can see. Trevinsky trying to play with the hitter a little bit. Showed that elevated target. Stuck the fastball on the outside part of the plate. Quick first out to strike out for Javon Coleman. So here's Vahiva Aloy, sophomore from Wailuku, Hawaii. You mentioned Sac State last year is currently riding a six game hit streak. Aloy stands 6'2, 200 pounds. And it yanks that one to the LSU dugout railing, one and one. He was a freshman All-American last year, the 
WAC Freshman of the Year and Second Team All Conference. He had 415 in conference play. One one. Just up and away. Home plate umpire tonight is David Ewell. Two one runs inside. Three balls and a strike. Talking to this Arkansas staff regarding Aloy that he's working on his plate discipline. Needs to be confident. He's shown really good bat to ball skills in practice. Trying to come on late. That is a great sign to pick up a one out walk. He's listening. Coming into the at bat, just nine walks, 17 strikeouts this year for Aloy. But that time was taken all the way. First pitch of the at bat, worked into a 3 1 count. The Hogs have their first base run. Aloy, three for three on the bases. First base coach Bobby Werner is giving some instructions. Be held on by Jared Jones. Here's Ben McLaughlin. And a first pitch strike. The senior out of Golden, Colorado, by way of Hutchinson Community College. One ball, one strike. What do you got on the Hutch mascot? If you pull this one off, I'm impressed. Two words. Baby. Two words, mythical creature. Oh. I'm, I'm picturing a wing, gri like a griffin of some sort. Something with wings and, and blue talons. Blue dragons. Yeah, I'm, I was right there. Blue dragons. Oh, yeah, mythical creature kind of led you down the road a little bit. Uh -huh. I didn't ask for the end. No, you started with baby something. But you, you were you were walking right towards it. Runner goes and the ball lined into right center field. Aloy on his way to third. Exton Kling scoops it up. Pardon me, that's it is Kling in fact, but it's a single for McLaughlin and Arkansas has got something cooking here in the first. Dave Van Horn pushing buttons early right here. So you get Aloy standing on first base with one out. This is a hit and run the whole way. And McLaughlin got the shortstop covering, just want to barrel it up, ideally on the ground. But if you drive it into right center, it doesn't much matter. Aloy moving, he's going to go first to third easy. One out walk, now the single by McLaughlin. And the Hawks are in business here to start. And it's Jared spraying a lot to the plate. I just wanted to point out that my favorite dragon is Puff the Magic Dragon. He lives by the sea. Thank you. 323 average for Sprague Lott. Time called, no uh -oh. pitch, and time call. So 1 0. Oh, wait, did you get the batter or the pitcher? Uh, no, he got the pitcher. So David Yule's the home plate umpire, and you can see his hands go up right there, and then. That's, that's the one you don't really like wearing. You don't get anything out of it. That's right. Ball one. Sprague Lott takes it in the front foot. Transferred in from Richmond. Spent three seasons for the Spiders. 2-0 the count now to the four-hole hitter. Sitting on two home runs. Philly native. Also had four letters in basketball at Springside Chestnut Hill Academy. Three and up. Oh. Laughlin at first, Aloy at third. Grooves one for the first strike. I think for Coleman tonight, one thing you got to fight is this feeling that you need to be perfect. Um, you're not necessarily facing the other guy on the mound. But you know that there's probably not going to be a lot of runs tonight. Ground ball to short. Branswell goes to second for one. Milan on his way to first, and Arkansas held off the scoreboard thanks to only the 15th. Thanks to a very well rounded team led by Hagen Smith in the first pitch. Hayden Travinsky is fouled off. You know, I was 
in Northwest Arkansas for a college basketball game right before that Hagen Smith start against Oregon State and the chatter on Sports Talk Radio that afternoon is whether or not Hagen Smith could get out of like the third inning. <laughs> well he did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I he mean did. to say the sky was falling would yeah. be an under. Hey you know he only he only got three outs against James Madison. What, yeah, what's going like to happen tonight. 31 degrees and wind blowing sideways. Um, then he went down to Texas and punched out 17 with an Oregon State team that themselves is top five. Dane Travinsky watches that one miss up and away. Senior from Shreveport, Louisiana. One of three catchers that Jay Johnson will rotate through behind the plate. Opening day in the big leagues, that is a big league stash. Trevinsky went three for nine. Can't catch up to 97. Three for nine against Florida last weekend. Here's the payoff. Got him looking at 96 in the black. Trevinsky didn't think so. But Hagen Smith is now K three out of the first four. If Hagen Smith's going to get this one. Um, this is going to be a rough night for LSU hitters because that one's off the play. Good spot if you're going 0-2. Sometimes you get a chase. That time Travinsky held up. To me, it looked like it was a little bit off the plate, but now Hagan Smith has punched out three of the first four. Here's Jared Jones, 6'4, 253 pound sophomore out of Walton High School, Marietta, Georgia, just south side of Atlanta. He's replacing one of the best defensive first basemen we've seen in a while, Trey Morgan, off that national championship team. 2-0. Jones went three for 11 against Florida last week in a very disappointing series for Florida as a whole, especially getting run ruled on Sunday afternoon. However, if you just change a play or two in the Saturday extra inning loss, probably feeling totally different about themselves, including a pass ball that allowed Florida to get back in that game before Jack Caglione won it in the 11th. It was kind of the first weekend against Mississippi State for LSU. I mean, a, a play here, a swing there, and they end up winning two out of three in a row. But instead, they come in here to Arkansas playing the number one team in the country, starting two and four in the SEC. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number four of five faced for Smith. You said he's averaging two Ks an inning? Uh, yeah, he's on pace so far. Uh, punched out four of the first five. That time he's just grabbing a fastball and letting it go. 96 right there to finish off Jones. I think that's going to be the approach against Jones tonight. To me, he's got to show that he can handle real velocity. This is clearly real velocity. That time, Hagen Smith just threw it right by him. Here's Michael Braswell, the third. He transferred into LSU from South Carolina. Two years with the Gamecocks for the Mableton, Georgia native. 1 0. Easy 95. Hagen Smith has not allowed an earned run in 22 innings since he, since he allowed one in the first inning on March 1st. Braswell sends it to short. Alloy. Hagen Smith has thrown 26 pitches through two innings. He has struck out four. No score. Want to be in a position as Kendall Diggs leads off the second at LSU where you are rebuilding. However, in the portal era and the NIL era, you can just reload. Yeah, you, you don't have to wait for him to grow up quite as much. Diggs swung out of his helmet on that one, one on one. Well, I mean, last weekend against Florida, the entire starting rotation for LSU were all transfers. Holman, Jump, and Thatcher Hurd, two from UCLA, one from Alabama. What do we make of the move to put Hurd in the bullpen? I think it makes sense now. Um, the the outcome hasn't necessarily matched the stuff so far for Hurd. I mean, we saw him last weekend. He was pretty darn good for three or four, and then it was just gone really quick. Now, if you go shorter stints, maybe the stuff ticks up a little bit out of the bullpen, and then you can also always push him back into the rotation if it doesn't if it doesn't work with Coleman or anybody else. Diggs had two hits in the finale against Auburn. It goes down looking here. That's the second strikeout for Javon Coleman. 
and then the throw to Tommy White ended up in short left field, which is why the crowd reacted as such. Here's Jack Wagner. 312 average with a home run and four driven in. This is just the fourth start of the season for Wagner. And the breaking ball stays up and away. Senior out of Wichita, Kansas. We talked how LSU has built and supplemented its roster through the portal. This is, from a roster standpoint, an old Arkansas team. Jack Wagner is 24 years old. You don't see that as much in this league as you do in others, but you can see the age. Senior or grad students. 12 on this Arkansas roster right now. Struck deep center field. Pex and Kling will come back towards the plate for it. Wind is blowing in from right, and there's two down now. Now batting. The catcher, number eight, Hudson White. Beautiful night here in northwest Arkansas. The Temperature get down to the upper 50s before we're finished, but sun splash to start. Home crowd hasn't had much to cheer about just yet. Here's a junior from Keller, Texas, Hudson White. And him and Diggs don't get cheated on their swings, do they? No. No, but that is the one thing that, that doesn't really jump out for this Arkansas offense right now is the power numbers. In a season to where it seems like home runs are up all over the place hasn't necessarily hit for Arkansas. But but I think you look at the positive, which Dave Van Horn has. Hey, even though we haven't hit maybe the way that I think we can, we're still 20 and three. Lone home run for White came on opening day. Felt a little bit different for Dave Van Horn because Hudson White led off opening day as a catcher. And Horn said, yeah, I don't remember ever having a catch up catcher in the one hole. Transferred in from Texas Tech. Arkansas recruited him hard out of high school. In fact, they thought he was going to end up coming here. But opted to go to Lubbock instead. He's a freshman All-American at 22. Last year, honorable mention, all Big 12, hit 11 home runs. Swing and a miss at 91. Third K for Coleman. Ben. Absolutely crushing the ball. Mac Bingham to lead off for LSU. Zan had leadoff home runs in five straight games. Hello, Ricky Oregon Henderson. State. On that short list to potentially be the first pick in the draft. Five home runs for Bingham and 17 driven in. What's the biggest headline for you here early in the season? Um, I think just the home run numbers in general. I mean, Charlie Condon's got 17 already for Georgia. <laughs> not, not bad for a guy who redshirted a couple years ago. Yeah. Zero at bats two years ago. Last year burst onto the scene. This year with Bazana in that conversation to potentially now be the first overall pick. <laughs> Decent ascension. Chopped up the middle. Long run. Scooped up by Alloy and a little bit late. And Bingham. Reaches with a leadoff single. And that time, Aloy, who has made just one error this year at shortstop. In fact, between him and Stowball, they've got one error total up the middle. Shade a little bit more of the pull side, so it takes him longer to get there. Still an accurate throw running away from first base, but Bingham, enough speed to get down there. First hit of the night for LSU. There's Paxton Kling hitting in the eight hole. Show Bunt took it for a strike. 200 average for the sophomore from Roaring Springs, Pennsylvania. After Kling, it's Milam in the nine hole. Five sack bunts for LSU this season, and the appeal denied by January down first base.
Time granted to clean. You get dirt in his eye? Back to action, the 1-1 one, one pitch. 1-2. One Jay Johnson taking a bunt off right there. Got to a 1-1 one, one count turn. Kling loose just got a fastball he really couldn't do anything with. Knee high right on the outside black. Lob over to keep Bingham close, who's just two for five on the base pass this season. To the left side, Sprague Lock goes to second for one, on to first late. And Peyton Stovall had to pick himself up after this collision at the back. Yeah, he did. You see Stovall get there and down the slides directly. So the slide was fine right there. There's nothing at second base. And Kling, probably the most athletic guy in this LSU lineup. Enough time just to get down there, make sure to beat out the double play. It feels like one of those nights, we've already seen it from Dave Van Horn, where he put the hit and run on in the first inning. Where if you're LSU, you, you can't just sit and wait. Uh -huh. Probably not going to have an inning where you get three or four hits in an inning off Smith. Steven Milam fouls the first one off. Milam is a freshman. He's from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Five eight one seventy two started two of the three games against Florida and had just one hit over the weekend. Two for his last eighteen in conference play. Fastball away. Stephen Milan's nickname is Monster. He got that because when he was born, he was described as a hairy little monster. It took him three days before he got his first haircut. And it may not fit his look at 5'8", but that nickname has stayed with him. And in an article a couple weeks ago, Tommy White was talking about it. And he said, you know, when I first got a text from him, because he's a freshman, I didn't have him on my phone at the time. And it popped up maybe from Monster. <laughs> Not in time to get oh clean. Did you say he got his first haircut when he was three days <laughs> old? Three days. <laughs> Two one. Yeah. What was your first haircut? What was that? Is that something you're supposed to remember? No, it probably wasn't remember three days in. I got my first haircut. <laughs> I, I would, yeah, I, I, safe to say it wasn't three days old. Another throw over, and McLaughlin had to leap for that one. Haircuts aren't as much fun as they used to be. I, you're little, they're fun, and, and then you, you don't have as much hair when you get older, and you're like, I don't really like this anymore. I don't it's need to see the mirror. Process. Swing and a miss from Milam. First trip through the lineup, and Smith has struck out five. Yeah, that's the first one with the slider. Everything else has been the fastball up to this point. The slider is, from a whiff percentage standpoint, the best pitch that Hagan Smith has. The fastball's the lead as well. But combination of those two, that's how you strike out five guys the first turn through the order. Top of the order, and Ethan Fry, who's 0 for 1 with a K looking, and a first pitch slider for a strike. We'll hear from LSU head coach Jay Johnson next half inning. He said, I don't think I've ever faced a pitcher beat me three times. And that's what Hagan Smith could pull off tonight. Faced him at Hoover last year and in the regular season. Off the mound, smothering stop at second by Stovall. That is what Dave Van Horn calls him. He had the number one pick in the draft and the best pitcher in all of college baseball. Now you're facing something similar in Hagen Smith on the other side. How does that change your approach 
when you're facing a guy who's put up numbers like he has. You just got to fight him. He's going to get his outs. He's going to get his strikeouts. The key is to make it as hard on him as we possibly can. Try to get him in the stretch, elevate the pitch count, and on the occasion he makes a mistake, you want to make sure you hit it. Jay, Javen Coleman pushed in at the opening day roll this weekend. Um, what is ideal from your standpoint to see from Coleman tonight? Yeah, I'd like to get him through the next, uh, through the five hole, through digs, and then we'll turn it over to somebody else. We feel like we have a pitch count where he's at his best, and that kind of keeps him in it and uh, helps us match up as best we can. Jay, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. All right, thank guys, you. thank you. Jay Johnson's got a national championship to his name, came to LSU from Arizona. We had taken the Wildcats to Omaha a couple of times. And he will put his ace on the mound tomorrow. Luke Holman is 5 and 1 with an SEC best 0.78 ERA. An early start to this series because of Easter weekend. So on a Thursday night, no need to rush Holman up a day. And it makes for some really interesting chess match over the first two games of the series. Popped up to right. Milam back and Pearson in. Pearson long route to get there. One down. Wind is blowing dead in from right field. Got it at eight miles an hour. I think the what do you call what do you call the thing that measures the wind? Uh, windometer. <laughs> is that not it? I think the last part is right. Here's Ty Wilmsmeyer. Wilmsmeyer from Springfield, Missouri, played his first three years of college ball at the University of Missouri. And monitor could be one. Oh, what? And monitor. Anna Monitor measures wind speed and direction. Anyway, I think our Anna Monitor. should change the name. <laughs> they should. Windometer. Yeah. 3 0 pitch to Wilmsmeyer, and he takes a strike. One of two transfers from Mizzou that Arkansas employs now. Couple of outfielders, and Wilmsmeyer sends a sinking line drive to right. That'll drop for a knock. Wilmsmeyer Sunday night countdown begins at 6 Eastern on ESPN. Game also available on ESPN Deportes and ESPN Radio. How about that drop line? 88 players from the SEC on opening day rosters. Yeah. Decent. Including, including Wyatt Langford. Who was playing in this league last year? 1 0 to Stoball misses low. Listen to Buster only talk about Langford on a podcast this week, and he mentioned the fact that he could be hitting in the three hole by the end of the month for the defending world champions. Pull back on a fastball up. We've seen in the past, and usually it's relievers. Like a few years ago, Garrett Crochet essentially went to the big leagues after he got drafted by Tennessee. Opening day starter. Who was the guy from TCU that went to the Reds? He was up at the end of the year. Uh, left hander, same thing. Uh, oh, what? Was it Brandon Finnegan? Yes. Knew it. Taken all the way, and he takes ball four. Danger zone here in the heart of the order coming up. Lahiva Aloy drew a walk his first time up. He's reached base safely in five consecutive at bats. Three hits and a couple of walks. Two on for Aloy, the two-hole hitter. And a look back to Chase Wilmsmeyer back. Wilmsmeyer has elite speed. 
but he's only attempted a couple of stolen bases this year. Well, that time, too, for LSU, you're just trying to see if Aloy's going to square. You know, you're not going to pick anybody off at second base, but see if he tips his hand a little bit early and squares. He did not show bunt when Coleman spun around the second base. And now the veteran catcher, Hayden Travinsky, will buy some more time. There is action in the LSU bullpen. Jay Johnson said they'd ideally like to get Coleman past Diggs. So three of her, the first five in this Arkansas order are left-handers and all righties after that. So that's the ideal situation, get through the left-handers. It looks like we're uh, going to avoid the ideal situation. A lot of new bullpen names. Well, Yoa's first pitch is a fastball in the dirt to Aloy. 1-0. Two on for Arkansas in a scoreless game. One on one. Wilmsmeyer in second, Stovall at first, Aloy riding a six game hit streak. Up and away, two and one. Travinsky with a word of encouragement. Oop. Get right there. It was just stay through me. So stay on line to home plate. It's a high arm slot for Uyoa. A little bit different look for this Arkansas team with a slider that has pretty good depth behind it. Two and one. LSU in too deep here with two on and only one out. And there's ball four. Third walk issued and put on your hats if you got them. And McDonald's said spin them if you got them. Foam them if you got them. They Bases got them. are loaded. What we think it Sold a few of those here. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> One down for Ben McLaughlin, who's got three home runs and 18 ribbies on the season. Flinched at that one and went. McLaughlin has hit into four double plays. LSU's already turned one tonight. And he launches this one deep right field. It is into the wind and at the fence, hauled in by Kling. Tagging from third is Wilmsmeyer. He'll score easily. And Arkansas is on the board, but LSU's lucky that Mother Nature kept that one in the park. The top was just about ready to come off this place. That ball went in the air. It looked like it was definitely going to carry out. What wind there is is going to carry it to the bigger part of the ballpark. I think McLaughlin thought he had it. But enough time for Paxton Kling to get there right at the base of the wall. Deep enough for Wilmsmeyer to score easily and give Arkansas the first lead of the night. Two down for Jared Sprague Lott, who hit into a double play his last time up. And a first pitch fastball again. This one a strike from Uyoa. Sprague Lott was second team Atlantic 10 Conference. Versatile guy played over 53 starts at three of the four infield positions. Three fourteen average for the Spiders last year with 13 home runs. Arkansas shifted some things around for him. He was a dead pole hitter when he came in. Runner goes from first pitch as a fastball for a strike. And Aloy picks up his fourth stolen base in as many tries. We were talking to Dave Van Horn the other day. He said that was the biggest thing they tried to do in the fall is, is kind of shift the field for him a little. So 
very pull happy before trying to encourage him to use the middle of the field a little bit more. Talk to the grandpa triplets in the next half inning. This low two and two. Greg Lott homeward on opening day for this Arkansas program. And he sends a ground ball to third. Tommy White gathers and retires. Sprague Lott could have been a lot worse. Arkansas is threatened. Dave, you put Hagen Smith on the mound once a week. What kind of comfort level does that give you and your staff when you're able to trot him out there? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Uh, he's <laughs> he's fun to watch pitch. And I tell these guys all the time, now I said, you know, we're, we work with you all week, but uh, when you play, we, we, we watch because we're fans, and uh, and he's fun to watch. Hey, Dave, we talked to you earlier this week. You get Aloy the transfer at shortstop, Stovall at second base now healthy. Um, how good have those guys been? I mean, combined one error in the middle is saying something about halfway through the season. They've been amazing. Um, you know, they didn't get play together all fall because of uh, Peyton's shoulder injury. Uh, so immediately when, when you know, had the opportunity to start working with Peyton, getting him going, I had them doing everything together, playing catch, hanging out, just trying to get to know each other, know all their moves, and uh, it's worked out real well. Dave, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Okay, thank Thanks, you, Dave. guys. One ball and two strikes to Josh Pearson, the proud grandpa of triplets, identical twin boys and a girl. Might need to start a diaper fund. <laughs> That'd be that time. In fact, he missed a game last week. Be home with the family. What an exciting time, one and two now. He found out he was going to be the grandfather to triplets right at the ballpark. <laughs> yeah, he told us his story. He said, wife, daughter, son-in-law all showed up during one of our Monday afternoon scrimmages. We had the day off class, but they were working. Ground ball to first, and Pearson retired. And that'll bring Tommy White up. He said they came up, they told me we're having triplets. He said, I was holding a clipboard, two cell phones, and a stopwatch. And as soon as they said those words, every item I was holding ended up on the floor. Tommy White lined out to center field in the first inning. You mentioned something in his first at bat. That through his college career, both at NC State and LSU, he's been a slow starter at the plate. Any feel for why that is? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it was slow last year. NC State was better, but it, it was slow last year. And then you look at the end of the year, and he drives in 100 guys. So <laughs> it worked out fine. I'd love to be that um, slow. Yeah. He's such a fun hitter to watch. I mean, he will wear you out. We saw it in his first at bat. But he will wear you out in the middle of the field. And he's not afraid just to take it in that right center field gap. Golden Spikes watch list. The other thing, and Jay Johnson talked about this when we talked to him last week. He's made a jump defensively at third base. And when he transferred, Jay said, you're going to play third. And I think it was really important because from a draft standpoint, if, if you show the ability to defend at third, obviously the, the draft stock goes up. It, it has been impressive the way that Tommy White has looked over at third base defensively this year. The biggest part of that was getting healthy. Five days after yeah. the national championship, he had band surgery, didn't play in the fall, and he launches this one foul. And we first saw, I first saw him in person last week with the new shoulder, basically. Look at the error difference is one thing, but he made a couple of big league plays over at third base, and folks, said he's been doing that for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, I mean, we saw a good one tonight. I mean, it, the, the first step to go charge it is so important over at third base, make the decision whether to stay back or come charge it. I just, I think the instincts continue to get better. But to your point, he's finally helped. I mean, last year, any throw hurt. This year he can let it go when he needs to, can lay off when he's, he's got enough time. He had a home run in all three games of the Mississippi State Series two weeks ago. Two of those home runs went opposite field. We talked to opposing pitching coaches about how to approach Tommy White. The fear is that he takes that fastball away and he just drives it. And he gets a breaking ball and lofts it towards left field deep in the corner and gone! And Tommy White has even this game with a solo home run. 
And for Hagen Smith, the first run allowed in SEC play. Well, that changed the tenor of this one. It, it feels like, and this may be the case all year against Hagen Smith, if you're going to get him, it, it may be that to where you run into one. Tommy White got a slider that he had hooked a few foul before that. That one kept fair to tie it up. Hayden Travinsky launches this one deep to right field. Digs out of room. Back to back home runs for LSU. And the Tigers take a two to one lead here in game number one, and they've done it against Hagen Smith, who had only allowed two home runs all season. That hit halfway up the new Hunt Family Center out in right field. Came in at 94, left at 105. Here's Jared Jones, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. One and one. Big cut, one and two. LSU second in the country in home runs last year. This season ninth in the SEC with only 38 coming into tonight. Two two to Jones. 96 right down the gut. Tommy White and Hayden Travinsky going back to back. A little bit different approach. So White had hooked two different sliders foul. That's how long he kept that barrel in there. I mean, he cut the swing off at the end just to make sure the barrel stayed in the zone. The ball was probably off the plate. Hooks the slider into the bullpen and then a fastball elevated. And this one was a no doubt. One pulled, one the opposite way. And Tigers with two solo home runs at the lead. Here's Michael Braswell, the third. <laughs> two home runs allowed in the first 32 innings for Smith, and then two this frame. You think he was too predictable with the first pitch fastball to Dravinsky after the slider got hit out? Um, I think Tommy White is the only guy in LSU's lineup, maybe Jared Jones, that is going to have the reaction to that slider that he did. Everybody else is hunting fastball, and Dravinsky was absolutely hunting fastball. Line to short, off the mitt of Aloy. And Braswell keeps it rolling. Three hits in the last four batters for LSU against Hagen Smith. He's already thrown 20 pitches this inning. Now batting number nine, Matt Dale. Here's Mac Bingham, transferred in from Arizona. The season high hits allowed in any game this season against Hagen Smith is three. That's only happened twice. Last time out against Auburn. And in his second start of the season against Oregon State. And LSU has three of them in this one inning. I want to bing him. Little half swing. Smith will take it himself. And that will close the inning, but not before LSU. And the first pitch slips out of the hand of Uyoa. You know what would be a good grip compound? I'm just thinking here. Right, that's a big mustache wax. <laughs> that's, that's, yes. It's sad that I know exactly where you're going. I mean, Raleigh Fingers was the best for a reason. Fidel Uyoa rocking the upturn.
It's in for a strike two and one. If you if you're a fan of 1980s Major League Baseball and you see Fidel Ulloa and Hayden Trevinsky, that's like Raleigh Fingers against Don Mattingly. <laughs> the mustache wars. And that's your battery. Yeah, that's right. Kendall Diggs 0 for 1 of the strikeout looking. Lines it into center field. This will be easy for Kling. Here's the DH Jack Wagner. And Wagner looks at a first pitch strike. You know, Don Staley is a big Eagles fan. She's Philly through and through, and Arkansas has one of those on their roster, Jared Sprague Lott. And the staff always tries to find a way to converse, find something to talk about other than baseball. And a lot of this Arkansas staff, Dave Van Horn was telling us, and I talked with Nate Thompson about it. They're big Chiefs fans, so why not talk Chiefs Eagles? You're trying to recruit a guy. Actually, might scare them off. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I worked out a little bit better for the Chiefs. One and two. Wagner with a pop up to center field. Of course, Dave Van Horn is from Kansas City, and Nate Thompson is third base coach. Small town Kansas talking with Nate before the game today. This one smoked deep left field. Bingham to the fence, and it is gone into the hog pen. And we are tied. Second home run of the year for Wagner in just his fifth start. First since opening day. That's where it's going to go today. You get, get it back spun out to left field. What win there is is going to help ride it out. Wagner with the one swing ties it up here in the fourth. 1 0 fastball pulled up for a strike. 1 1. Tried it again, two and one. Three and one. Hudson White went to Texas Tech out of Byron Nelson High School. Grew up in Keller, Texas. We're going to have Tiger Woods High School soon. There are any one? Ball four. I don't know if that's a high school. Answer your question, yes. I bet there is right after there's Tom Hart Secondary School somewhere. Jack Wagner right there would said home run number two, man. He got enough of it. Jack Bingham goes back, knows he runs out of room right here, and then the hawk pin comes to life now that we got a tie game. So here's Will Edmondson, he's 0 for 1. Blowing away. Tom Hart School for the gifted. Jack Wagner's home run, 100 off the bat, went 364. And ended up somewhere in the heart of that hog pen, still in the sunshine. 2 0. And a meeting on the mound forthcoming. There's that Travinsky mustache we were talking about. The Yola threw in the midweek just seven pitches in the win against Southeastern. He did not pitch in the Florida series last weekend. 
2 0 to Edmondson. Now 2 and 1. Double barrel action in the uh, LSU pen. Will Helmers with Justin Lohr getting loose. Two and two. It's going to be the 20th pitch of the inning from Uyoa. White has only attempted one stolen base this year. Two two. Fought off. Razorbacks 20 and 3 on the season, 5 and 1 in the league. Lost the finale of the Auburn series. Two two pitch. Muscled this one to left field on the run. Bingham Kling is there and they collide. But the catch made by Kling. And everybody in the first few rows of the hog pen taking credit for that lack of communication. <laughs> it was me. It was me yelling. That's why they couldn't hear each other. Kling wants it. It's his ball all the way and ends up being Paxton's Kling. Paxton Kling's ball. Quite there, but. Little nervous moment in that LSU dugout when he saw two guys coming together, both trying to catch it. So here's Ty Wilmsmeyer. Leadoff hitter by trade. He's in the nine hole right now until he gets his back going. 236 coming in. Saw his former team come in week one of SEC play, Missouri with a new head coach. Lost a couple of guys to the portal. And Arkansas beat him by cumulative score of 23 to 1. I think it too. Oh, two pitch just off the edge. One two to Wilmsmeyer with a runner aboard. There he goes, swing and a ball fouled straight back. I've got the wristbands on, so you can send in plays. Bobby Wernis checked his, and had a word for Hudson White. Dave Van Horn said it's really cut down and having to go through all the signs, having to try to hide your signs. And this one's flicked into center field for a base hit for Wilmsmeyer, who is two for two in this one. First time up, little flare to right field. This time, great job of using the bottom half of his body in the swing for Wilmsmeyer. Saw the slider, got into his legs, and it allows the barrel to stay in the zone a little bit more to handle the slider, shoots it out to center, and it turns the lineup over for the Hogs. Peyton Stovall has his track out and a walk. And so keep it a 2 2 tie right here. It'd be huge for LSU. That's what the odds would suggest, at least. Is Peyton Stovall stands in from the left side with two on and tips the first one off of Travinsky. Nothing in one. Lohr saw his former team come to town earlier this season. Xavier Musketeers. He transferred in after two seasons. Ed Xavier. Pitched primarily out of the pull, bullpen for the Musketeers last year. Had 63 strikeouts in 57 innings. Does this sound weird to you? 
28 relief appearances, and Justin Moore had nine decisions last year. Finished six. That seems three. like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. High leverage. Also ended up with seven saves. 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. And a tune out of Stovall. And Horn mentioned the shoulder injury to Peyton Stovall. Then he got injured in February. Broken bone in his foot. Took a changeup in the foot in a scrimmage from one of the freshmen. And he said, man, I've been in the pit in the foot a hundred times. It just hit me in a bad spot. Low and away, Travinsky lucky that kicked up the third baseline instead of the opposite way. Runner at second base is Hudson White. Ty Wilmsmeyer at first. Stovall is a Louisiana native. He's from Houghton, Louisiana. It's a projected first round pick coming out of high school. Number one prospect in the state. Turned down big money. And he lasers one to right field. That'll get at least one home. White scores. Wilmsmeyer stopped at third. And Arkansas back in front. Talk about it just a minute ago. How important it was for LSU to get out of the sink, keep it a tie game. We can turn the lineup over. Stovall gets his third look of the night. Left on left. Got a fastball elevated enough. Shoots it to right field. We've already seen the ball carry to right. So both right fielders are playing really deep. Base runners off and running. Hudson's White scores easily, and Arkansas has got the lead back. And here's the two hole hitter. Aloy has been walked twice and looks at a first pitch strike as the sun sets here in Fayetteville the wind is just about died down. Look at that wind. In the dirt. One on one. Runners on the corners. Swing and a miss. Change up at 84. It's a good run right there. Lower. Really won't use that change up against left handers, but it's been a pretty good pitch against righties that time. Malloy recognized, or at least thought he recognized, fastball was all the way out in front of him. One, two. Tipped into the catcher's mitt for a strikeout, but Arkansas jumps back in front. Wagner with a home run to tie it. And then Stovall puts him in pretty quick. Paxton Kling looks at a fastball. I had forgotten about Nolan Shanuel. Came out of Florida Atlantic and made it last year. Skyrocketed up, yeah. Kling 0 for 1. I feel like we are just desensitized to great performances and Accolades. Everybody is on television these days. Everybody gets pumped up. Everybody gets exposure. Can you just back to Langford explain how big of an accomplishment that is for a guy who three years ago got what four at bats for Florida? His freshman year. Yeah. Four at bats the whole year. Sophomore year played the entire year. Obviously his junior year was one of the best hitters in the country. Um, you know what? They put him out last year and he hit everywhere. Hit double A, hit triple A, so he goes to big league spring training this year. He ended up with six home runs, seven home runs in spring training. Um, and at the end of the day, the ball don't lie. And when Langford's up there, the ball goes a long way. And regardless of how good a club is right now, everybody needs more guys that can hit. Langford can hit. Even if you're raising a banner, here's the 3 2 to cling. Punched out. He thought it was ball four. Two pitches prior. And I thought that one was ball four also. It is a pitcher friendly zone tonight. 
And if that's the case, go ahead and take advantage of it. You can see Hudson White, man, he moved that ball a long ways. Watch the glove. Goes down and gets it and then brings it all the way back. Generally a pretty good indicator whether that ball's off the plate or not, but regardless, Kling goes down looking. Seventh K for Smith, who leads the country in strikeouts per nine. Chopper to short. Aloy on the run. Two down. And that'll take us back to the top of the order. I want to go back to what you said a moment ago, it being a pitcher's zone. How does your catcher, how do you guys work in tandem to make sure you could take advantage of that in terms of, hey, let's work the black, let's work off the plate? Well, rarely is it both sides, right? I mean, usually if the zone is bigger, it's it's usually bigger on the outside part of the plate, whether it's a righty or a lefty up there, and that's what they've been able to do. Hagen Smith has taken advantage of that, uh, specifically against the right handers. To his arm side, he's gotten off the plate, nothing and one to Ethan Fry, who's over two. Dave Van Horn generally lets catchers call their own game here at Arkansas. They do have communication into the catcher's helmet if they want to give a reminder or get specific. But Matt Hobbs, a pitching coach as well. But how does it tie into pitch selection then? Um, low zone, high zone. So depending on who you are, I mean, t today I think the zone is probably a little bit friendlier down than up. And so maybe you're trying to take advantage of that a little bit more. I think the other thing is too is, you, I mean, you still got to you still got to play to what the guy's best stuff is too. But for Hagen Smith, if you know that you might get a little bit more arm side against right-handers, it's okay to miss a little bit off that plate because he's gotten the benefit of a few of them. Two and two. Fry struck out looking in the first inning. Swing and a miss on the slider. Hagen Smith didn't like the initial pitch call. We know how important baseball is to the folks in Louisiana. We saw it first person when we were there last weekend. Two of the largest crowds in LSU history. I want to McLaughlin. What would a national title mean to Dave Van Horn and his fan base and those that have come so close in the past? I mean, it, it's the only thing he hadn't done. You take that one win out of it, and Dave Van Horn is had as good a run here at, at Arkansas as anybody has in the last 20 years. Um, it was a fly ball away from it against Oregon State in game two. Arkansas would have won it. Instead, it falls. Oregon State beat him in game three. Ball four puts McLaughlin on to start the fifth. Obviously, if you're ranked number one in the country, you've done things to the point that you're among the elite. Fifth most wins as an SEC head coach all time. That's a pretty decent list, right? <laughs> it's not bad. So I'm going to ask you a question. I, I think I already know the answer, but just for the sake of conversation. Could this be the year? Is this Arkansas team good enough to bring home a trophy? They are on the mound, for sure. And I, I think they definitely are defensively. I, I'm, I'm going to have to see a little bit more. Offensive firepower, I think, top to bottom. Now, I don't know that there's a super team out there. Um, I mean, there's some where the power numbers have been through the roof and the pitching numbers aren't there and vice versa. But they, they will pitch it with anybody, and I, I think that will continue the entire year. If you see the power numbers jump. Um, Forget about it. Arkansas's, yeah, I mean, they're as good as anybody now. But if, if that happens, they've got a clear advantage over, I think, anybody else. Trubinsky wants this one high. They'll throw over. Jared Sprague lot over two couple of ground outs. I think Oregon State is in that discussion. I think AM's in that discussion right now. Clemson is in that discussion. Even though Clemson had to score eight in the ninth to win one last weekend and come back from an 11 2 deficit in game three. Two and one.
I'm proud doesn't have track man. <laughs> the pitch to Sprague Lott with McLaughlin aboard and a throw over again. I didn't think I'd ever ask this question, but in reference to Oregon State, could the lack of elite teams in the Pac-12 be a hindrance to Oregon State's postseason success? There's no. No, I don't think so. I mean, I think they blow through the pack. Um, and I think they end up being a national seed and host, and they, their non-conference is good. The only game they lost at Globe Life was to, was to Arkansas when Hagen Smith punched out 17. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, he would – he might have beat the Rangers that night if he was pitching at Globe Life. This with the changeup, full count. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, admittedly this is a former Pac-12 player. I won't call myself an athlete, but um, it, it's just strange to to know that this is the last run through that conference. Yeah. Strike three called right on the edge. Second K for Justin Lohr. To have you in your feelings a little bit. Yeah, man, it stinks. I mean, I, I know the way the world works right now. That's a good glove side fastball right there for Lohr. But um, I mean, USC comes to play Nebraska next year in a conference football game. And that just seems weird to me. And your alma mater will be flying all the way across yeah. the country to play spring baseball games. Yeah. Stanford. All Coast Conference. And for a strike to Kendall Diggs, he's 0 for 2. Well, in the last go around of the Pac-12, it seems like the Cal Bears have their typical scrappy team for one last run in that league. They got a chance, and they got a few stars. Caleb Lom Lomanita's had a good start to the year already. Oregon's off to a good start in the pack, but it doesn't feel like a year to where the pack's going to get five or six teams in. Eleven baseball teams in the Pac-12, six of them are 500 or worse right now. Ouch. Two and one. What's the ceiling for the SEC in terms of postseason teams? Because it seems like the roof has been lifted. Nobody's ever had more than 10. Like 10 has happened five. I think Missouri's the only one right now that you look at the league and say, yeah, that's not going to happen this year. I mean, what we show? There's 10 teams in the top 25 yeah. right now. And the most that any conference has ever got into the postseason is 10 teams. Here's the 2-2 pitch with a runner on. Or not. And time granted, Kendall Diggs at the plate. This league, the SEC, will just continue to collect talent. Get in. Yeah. Just get in and you could find yourself in Omaha. Strike three call. Braswell knew it. Two down. And that'll bring Jack Wagner up. Here's what he did in the fourth. Not that short swing, too. I mean, the feet didn't even really hardly move. Stayed spread out. Traveled a little bit. That at the time tied it. Arkansas would take the lead later on in the inning. Wagner's well-traveled, came out of Mays South High School in Wichita, spent four seasons at Kansas, and then last year, a redshirt senior year at Tarleton State. 48 starts for Tarleton State last year. Quick, give me the Tarleton State mascot. Uh, the rodeoers. It's a rodeo school. I know that. Very close. They are the Texans. It'd be original if they were in Utah. <laughs> Not when you're actually in the state of Texas. The Utah Tech Texans. Yeah. But you know that they're a rodeo school, huh? Yeah. Two and one to Wagner.
37 rodeo national champions championships for Tarleton State. Three and one. Do you know how many people are on the Tarleton State rodeo team? Give me, give me a guess. 60. 164. Card carrying student members last calendar year. Would not want to be the clubby for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that is the second walk from Lore. It feels like if Lore can just hold steady, that he's going to be out there for a few innings. With LSU down one and Hudson White coming to the plate, Jay Johnson went back and had a word with Nate Yeski. He was a couple of steps out. How does that make you feel as a pitcher? Skipper's cut. Nope. The hog you turn. Hey, nope, go, go get him, kid. I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. Never He's doubted you for a second. <laughs> just wanted to make the hammies. We're loose. We're, we're good. White drew a walk his last time up. Sends a ground ball up the middle. McLaughlin being waved home from third by Nate Thompson. The throw goes to third, and he is out at the plate to end the inning. And they say the run did not cross in time. Dave Van Horn says we got to take a look at this. David Ewell says the out was made at third before McLaughlin came across the plate. And so they bring LSU back out and they'll take a look at this. What did you think to the naked eye? Uh, my naked eye went to third base. And it, it should be. This, this is also why you bust it even if you know you're going to be safe. Because ultimately when the tag's made right here, it's just whether or not that foot is crossed. And that was the difference on a borderline play. Josh Pearson, the two-hole hitter, looks at a first pitch strike. Pearson is 0 for 2, strike at the ground out. And so the question was whether or not McLaughlin touched the plate before the tag was made on Jack Wagner at third. Two. Meanwhile, Hagen Smith has bounced back nicely from the two home run fourth. He struck out two of the last four. Given up a hit since that inning. Hagen Smith this year has given up six runs the entire year. All on home runs. Three run shot in the opener against James Madison and three solo home runs. That's it. And the one against James Madison wind aided. Let's go back to the end of the fifth inning. Try to let you be the judge on a closer look. I think the question is, where's the tag? So, I mean, you go, you got to go frame by frame on this. There's a tag there before. Did he tag him on the elbow right before he got in? It is so close that I, I think either way that was called on the field, it probably stays that way. Tommy White with a swing and a miss. White homered in the fourth inning. Got a slider, just got the bat head out and around it, put it over the wall and left. And the first time up today, hit a missile to right center on a fastball. A shifted Stovall up the middle on him. It's the first time it moved the infield around against White tonight. And he sends this one high and deep to right field. Digs back at the fence. And hauls it in. A step in front of the wall. Two down. I would assume that there's some scouting heat in the building tonight because there's going to be a lot following Hagen Smith and Tommy White the whole year. These are the matchups they want to see. Because these are the guys that you're going to have to, to face if, if you want to hit in the big league. So far tonight, home run to left. Line out to center field and he flies out to the base of the wall and right. I know he's only one for three, but Tommy White has looked pretty good at the plate. Hayden Trevinsky at the plate. Got to the rental car counter last night and after I got over the ire of the fact that they kicked the rental cars out of the parking garage. Nice decision, airport people. Uh, the guy at the counter said, Oh, you're in for the game. He said, It's you and a ton of scouts already. Business is booming in the rental car industry. 
your guess would be right. That one in the dirt, one and two. Hagan Smith leads the nation in strikeouts per nine. 19 and a quarter. Half swing. Did not go. Two and two. Dravinsky ambushed the first pitch fastball his last time up. Sent it 369 feet off the building in right center. Full count. Did you get a slider here? Go glove side fastball. And this one's lined to right center field. Wilmsmeyer on the run comes up empty, and Travinsky is on the board with a two out single. Diggs was playing way over in the corner. And the inning continues for Jared Jones. Just thinking about this. I think Matt Hobbs has taken a trip to the mound since week one. With this guy? No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he has. You don't really need to. No, I mean, there's been no traffic. Two solo home runs in this one, but I'm getting lonely in there. There's Jared Jones. I had a long talk with Hobbs before the game about Hagen Smith's demeanor. And he said, man, when he is not on the mound, he is the nicest guy. You can have an incredible conversation with him, but if you Pitching coach. <laughs> Brilliant pitching coach. When you run that guy out there, it's, it's amazing how, how good you get. Our conversations with Hobbs mirror each other. I, I did ask him, I said, so you taught him the slider? And he just started laughing. He said, if I could teach somebody to throw a slider like that, I'd be somewhere else. Two balls in a strike. You know, a couple years ago when Arkansas was playing in the College World Series, Hagen Smith was just playing catch in the outfield. And he changed his grip just a little bit, just a millimeter. And that's where this slider came from. He went back out the next time and caved like half the Ole Miss roster. Probably only made him three million. To the right side, McLaughlin. This one into the seats. Obviously, you have to be talented before that. But can that be the difference in one pitch jumping oh, yeah. that much? Yeah. in at 95 pitches right now. The two outs in the sixth. Here's the 2-2 two -two to Jared Jones. Swing and a miss on the slider. That is Kane number nine. Three hits. Tenth appearance of the season for Little, the Vanderbilt transfer. It'll start with Will Edmondson, the eight-hole hitter. Edmondson swings at the first and sends it to right. Pearson handles it. One down with Wilmsmeyer coming up. They've had some great center fielders throughout the history of this Arkansas program, including Dominic Fletcher, who was just magnificent out there. Talking with Van Horn yesterday, he said, yeah, this guy Wilmsmeyer's got elite speed. He can go get it in the outfield. He had a catch earlier this year. He crashed into the fence in left center field. And the, the analytics that Arkansas has available as a program are next level. I mean, they're in line with all the big league stuff in many ways. But he ran a route that was 98% perfect to get to that ball. You can't get much better than that. It's not on a run that long. No, you've got the right guy out there. Two balls and a strike. You know, all the big league uh, ballparks have technology where they track everything, every movement. And when Missouri played at Coppin Stadium a couple of years ago, ground ball to short. He was clocked on a sack bunt. They play in Kansas at Kaufman. Now 
His speed was 30.9 feet per second. To put that in perspective, and by the way, his home the first time was 396. That On the is right side. <laughs> yes. And uh, Major League Baseball elite is 30 feet per second. He was at 30.9. Her ball in for a strike. What I'm saying is he could beat you in a foot race. He's fast. <laughs> yes, he could beat the freeze. Here's Peyton Stovall. Same pitch, nothing in two. Last year, Stovall was preseason first team all conference, a preseason All American, was injured with shoulder, missed the whole year, sends it to the gap, and after a wide turn, a retreat to first, two out single, it's his second hit of the game. That's back to back, really good at bats by Stovall. Last time up left on left, singles to right, that scored a run that ended up giving press. Ended up pitching in Omaha in the College World Series, and it looked like this is the next one at Vanderbilt. Um, and it just it didn't work there. He transferred to LSU at a few different roles last year. Was on that team that won it, but kind of pitched in a bunch of different spots. There are still flashes. There are flashes of that guy that you saw freshman year. I mean, that was 96 miles an hour, four seamer at the top of the zone. The breaking ball's real. We've seen it this inning. It just consistency has been the issue for Little. 6'4", 235 pounds. Out of Christian Brothers in St. Louis, one and two. It is only a one run Arkansas lead, and despite the fact that it's a tight game, Jay Johnson has used guys out of the bullpen that he wouldn't normally use if the, unless the score had been flipped, right? If it was a 3 to 2 LSU lead, you're seeing different guys out of the pen. A little roller up the middle. Braswell boots it, and everybody's safe. And the inning continues. Braswell was maybe a little bit confused as to what he was going to do with this. Stephen Milam, the second baseman, moved that back to second. She could have flipped there. I don't know if he had enough time to try to throw. Malloy out at first, but Braswell, who's been very sure handed this year at LSU at the shortstop position. I ruled that a base hit. That a hit. I don't know if he throws anybody out right there. And now the three hole hitter, Ben McLaughlin, stands in from the left side. This with a 96 mile an hour fastball, 1 0. Laughlin drove in a run with a third inning sack fly. Two and one. McLaughlin, when he saw the field last year, primarily appeared as a DH. Brady Slavens was playing over at first. When he's playing for the Dragons at Hutch, what are they? The Magic Blue Dragons. Blue Dragons. <laughs> the Magic Dragons, no. Curveball in for a strike. He was a gold glove winner at third base and a second team All American. You remember that song, Puff the Magic Dragon, Live by the Sea? Who doesn't remember that I, song? If I didn't remember that song, I'd, I'd ask me to leave, and I probably would. Not at that ball to homily. Two and two. You ever been there? No, I don't have a passport. It's in Hawaii, so you actually don't need one, but um, <laughs> they, they haven't they haven't changed those rules. It's, it's the same. Wait, I had no idea it was a real place. It I, is. I thought it was just a no, random children's actually, song about no, a magic dragon. It is a real place in Hawaii. 
Trebinsky out to have a word. This is like the ninth time today that I've said something and you started fact checking me on your computer. I'm not fact checking. I'm just curious. I, I need to need to find Hanali on MapQuest. Why did little Jackie Paper bring him strings and sealing wax and other fancy stuff? I'm, I'm stopping at Hawaii. Two two pitch to McLaughlin. Chopper to the right side. Milam was placed perfectly and that will close. First pitch in for a strike. What makes McIntyre so effective? He throws a ton of strikes. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing right now with McIntyre, what he's done kind of through his career, but even more so this year. Breaking ball and close enough, nothing at two. And that's that's what makes him really good right now, is that over the top kind of get more depth than you think you're gonna do from that arm arm angle breaking ball. Four straight scoreless appearances for McIntyre goes right back to it. One down, the inaugural United Football League kicks off this weekend. We'll have unparalleled access, doubleheader on ESPN, ESPN Deportes and ESPN Plus on Sunday. DC takes on San Antonio at noon, then Houston and Memphis at 3 o'clock Eastern. They keep hanging the K's. Smith had 10 of them. McIntyre's got one. Miss with that breaking ball, 1 0 to Mac Bingham. By the way, to close the book on Smith, that's 70 strikeouts over the last 34 innings pitched for Hagen Smith. So he did not go 2 0. 70 in his last 34 innings. Uh -huh. he plays. Two out of Bingham. Two and one. That's the confidence that McIntyre has in that slide. Two zero count. Mac Bingham, who's hit leadoff some for LSU this year, they bump him down the lineup today, but still confident enough in the ability to land that pitch to throw it two zero. And sends a breaking ball into center field. Wilmsmeyer dives. It comes up empty again. Behind him, it's picked up. And it's a one out double for Mac Bingham his second hit of the game. I think this is a mistake in center field by Wells Meyer who's an outstanding center fielder but you got a one run lead in the seventh and there's just not enough time for Edmondson to get behind and back this up and keep Bingham standing at first base if you play it off a hop there's a lot better chance to keep Bingham at first keep the double play in order that time lays out doesn't have a chance to get there and the tying run for LSU is now in scoring position with one out. And instead of Paxton Kling, LSU is going to send up a pinch hitter. This is Ashton Larson. Oh, well. LSU has five sack bunts on the season. Larson looks at a curveball in the dirt. He is one for his last three as a pinch hitter. Got a pinch hit single against Southeastern on Tuesday night. Fouls are back. Luke Holman, Mason Molina, the matchup tomorrow. Holman, sub one ERA. We had him last week against Florida, and he was phenomenal. Struck out 13 in that game against the Gators. Mason Molina, the Texas Tech transfer, who's had a great turn so far for Arkansas. Little dribbler foul, one and two. Would have been a heck of a matchup tonight. Had Luke Holman moved up a day in the uh, rotation relative to when the series starts. Most of the SEC series this weekend, Thursday through Saturday, because of Easter Sunday. Pitch, breaking ball foul to the Arkansas dugout. Yeah. 
Ashton Larson is four for seven as a pinch hitter this year. Small sample size, but awfully impressive. Two and two. Time granted. It was the catcher Hudson White who wanted at that time. <laughs> two two to Larson. In there for strike three. Two down. Guys give up on this one for McIntyre. It, it is so much top to bottom break. Just not expecting that to come all the way back in the zone. It, it, it did. You can see the freshman Larson recognized that it was up in the zone and then it just kept moving back down. Two outs in the inning, both by strikeouts for Will McIntyre. So here's Steven Milam. Freshman swings and misses at the first. Milam four hits in his last ten at bats. He had a three for four game against Southeastern on Tuesday. Another curveball, nothing and two. Doubled and drove in a run against Southeastern. Here's the 0-2. Just missed. Tried to surprise him with that fastball right there. Slider heavy. Stick a fastball on the outside part of the plate. Just missed, but still in a plus count for McIntyre. Swing and a miss and one in the dirt. And McIntyre. Walking batter. But those two home runs have kept LSU hanging around here. Game number one of three. Tom Hart, Kyle Peterson, our fantastic crew with you. And Jared Sprague Lott starts off the seventh. It'll be the second inning of work for Christian Little. One on one. Sprague Lott is 0 for 3, couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Greg Lott is used to the big stage. He played in Williamsport, the Little League World Series in 2014. And he lined this one into center field. Lead off single. Do you remember him? I knew I knew the name. I knew I knew the name. Yeah. I knew the name. And here's Kendall Diggs. Diggs is from Olathe, Kansas, out of St. Thomas Aquinas. Started every game this season for Arkansas. Did not have a great series against Auburn last weekend. And looks at a curveball right at the elbow, 1 0. Five home runs this season. His first career home run two years ago was a grand slam. Came against Arkansas Little Rock. Appeal denied down the third base line, 2 0. Oh. It was another one. We were talking to Dave Van Orn the other day. He said, you know what? His offensive numbers are fine. 
I don't feel like he's really started hitting. Feels like there's a few guys in this Arkansas lineup that are like that. They get their 20 and 3 overall and 5 and 1 in the league coming in. Vinsky having a time back there, 3 and 0. Well, to your point, the pitching has been sensational for Arkansas and feels like a question of when and not if Diggs and the rest of the guys start swinging the bats. Vinsky out to chat with Little. Coach Matt Hobbs, Dave Van Horn. Pitching coaches are the one to really keep an eye on how quickly the home plate umpire goes out to break up the meeting of the other team. Well, he's got nothing else to do. Right <laughs> well, that's true. You know? But hey, if you're going to give that guy two and a half minutes, then I'm going to take two and a half. sure that I get the same. Real pitch. Right down college, three and one. Golfed in the shallow center, racing in and racing back, and it's Braswell who makes the catch, retreating from short. Diggs retiring, that'll bring Jack Wagner up. Jack Wagner. Wagner hit a home run in the fourth. His second of the season. And for a strike. After the home run, Wagner was walked with two outs in the fifth. Nothing in two. Ashton Larson has taken over in left field, and Mac Bingham moves from left to center. Larson came in to pinch hit the prior inning. Nothing in two at 96. Pardon me, that was strike three. 96 mile an hour fastball for Christian Little. You, you mentioned the fact that when he first took the mound at Vanderbilt, he showed great promise, and he's looking like he's got that consistency that he needs. I think it'll be interesting. He's going to get a chance to play pro ball. Um, and he's probably going to get a chance to go out and throw every day and, and see if he can start because that's it's really what he was doing at Vanderbilt towards the end of the year. In the dirt runner goes and Sprague lot takes second. With the seven hole hitter up. There's also there's always this natural assumption that guys are just going to make a jump every single year there in college and, and maybe even more so for little because he was so young he was 17 years old his freshman year at Vanderbilt. And there'll be times he shows you the yeah I remember that guy and then there's times where that inconsistency just hangs around. The stuff still plays. I mean, he's been as high as 97. Two balls and no strikes to Hudson White. One of four catchers on this Arkansas roster. Sends a foul. They grade these catchers interesting with all of the technology they have. Put it pretty simple. We we grade the catchers based on how you catch the ball. And it sounds really simple and maybe ridiculous, but Grade every pitch on how you catch it. 
And White is the guy they say is just a magician back there in terms of framing. Well, you see it every year at the major league level. I mean, the, the guys that are stealing the most strikes. Those that are borderline are just off that ultimately they get the call. And, and you're standing 60 feet away, those are the guys that you want to throw to. Big 12 freshman of the year, one of six in Texas Tech history. Gabe Holt in 18, the most recent before White. And old Josh Young in 17. Whatever happened to that guy? It's worked out okay. Yeah. A new ring. 3 1 to White. Upstairs, ball four. First, wa uh, first walk from Little. A lot of hit and an error in the six, but Arkansas left both stranded. And now two on with two out in the seventh. And transferred in from Missouri. Lovich from the Kansas City area out of Overland Park. He's not at 100% in the fall, fighting through some illness, finally got his strength back. Had a good run in that Missouri series. Makes a curveball thigh high, 1 0. Jay Johnson out there has been action in the LSU bullpen. Helmers is one of them. And they're going to. Longest outing is just one inning. He's done that three times. Got out there in the midweek, 8 to 4 win against Southeastern through 16 pitches. And misses low with 94 to Ross Lovich. Is this just a lefty lefty situation, or if he gets him out, do you think he sticks around for the eighth? Uh, I don't. I think he's probably out there just to potentially get a hitter. He came in with a 1 0 count. Two straight balls now works it to three. After Lovich, it's a right hander, Wilmsby. Ball four loads the bases. And here's Wilmsmeyer. Number one, Ty Wilmsmeyer. Ninety three miles an hour for a strike, nothing in one. All six runs that Johnson has allowed came in the first two outings. And that's just his second walk since that second outing. Ball in the strike. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Inside, two and one. Back to back walks with two outs allow the Hogs to load them. Three balls and a strike. Nowhere to put Ty Wilms by. The sellout crowd comes to its feet in Fayetteville. Full count. Didn't have crowds like this at IMG, did he? No. Here's the payoff. Yeah. 
Jared Sprague lot the runner at third Hudson White at second and Ross Lovich at first they're loaded for Ty Wilmsmeyer. Veteran versus freshman. Three two again. Line foul. Official attendance tonight 11,027. And I think 11,020 of them have the beer hats. Picks up an RBI in Arkansas this year. Four of them are grand slams. In the dirt, 1 0. That being said, you probably just get this hit. You get Stovall, and if, if Johnson doesn't get him, I think if you're LSU, you go to the bullpen trying to make sure it doesn't get any worse. But it's, you're going to have to figure out if, if he can get himself out of jams like this. 1 1. Kavinsky's not really doing him any favors back there. No. He's, he's had a hard night framing up. White, Lovich, and Wilmsmeyer have him loaded. Two and one. If you're Peyton Stovall, can you make Cam Johnson predictable here? I mean, I think you just sit in fastball, and if you get one to handle, great. If not, you get another shot. Swing and a miss, two and two. And he swung a ball three. Again, you got to dial up left on left. Johnson throws across his body a little bit, so it's not a comfortable bat for a left-hander. It looks like that ball's coming from back behind you. Stovall obviously was sitting fastball right there, just committed a little bit too early. Full count. Johnson can get out of this. LSU will have the top of the order do up in the eighth. Down two. Swing and a miss. What a performance by King. Well, McIntyre misses one and zero. So, what's your takeaway from Cam Johnson's performance? I think that last pitch showed guts on a few different levels. One to even call it. You know, Three-two breaking ball with the bases loaded in a two-run game, and, and then he landed it and got out of it. I, I think nerves are to be expected in a situation like this. He hadn't pitched on the road in the SEC yet. He comes in with some traffic, but ends up getting it out of there and at least keeping it close. I don't want to make too much of one appearance on a Thursday night, but how impactful can that be for him going forward? I think it could be huge. I mean, if for LSU to be as, as good as, as they think they can be at the end of the year, I think Johnson needs to figure into it more out of that bullpen as the season goes on. And th these are moments that you got to get him in. Breaking ball in for a strike to Ethan Fry. He might be saying in three years, and we're talking about him being a top prospect. Well, yeah, that, that night I faced Arkansas when Hagen Smith was on the mound. 2 2 pitch. What a job by Hudson White to bring that one back up in it. He, he stole one there. See the reaction of Fry, and that, that one wasn't a strike. I understand the reaction right there. But but this is he moved it a foot and a half back into the zone. But I mean, credit Hudson White got that slider, worked his glove back up into the zone, and steals a strikeout to start the eighth. Josh Pearson is 0 for three. You see that they're hanging the K's right mm -hmm. in front of the stands. I have a question about it. Curveball in for a strike. Let's see if I can help. Honolly? Is it about Honolly? It's not about Honolly. Why do some have a white background and some have a white letter? Um, 
Kinko's ran out of white paper. <laughs> so they had to throw the red in the, in the old K machine printer. Okay. Have you got anything better than that? I, I don't. I think it's fan, it, it's no. fascinating to me that they taped the bottom and not the top. O2 pitch. There's, there's tape. There's got to be tape at the top. Like I, don't, the, I don't see it. You see unless it. gravity just doesn't apply in Fayetteville, which I don't think is the case. There, there has to be tape only, on the top. Only a couple of rivers flow be on the back. Then fold it over. Is the one two. Pearson chase it in the dirt. That is strikeout number five. The throwdown finishes it off. See, it's on the back. I told you. Look, there's tape. He, the guy was ready. He's got duct tape rolled up on the back. You won't even see it on the bottom of this team. So we've got one guy who shows it off, like Simba, but yeah. another one who's in charge of hanging it. It is a multifaceted process. Uh -huh. Here's Tommy White. He hasn't struck out tonight. One for three with a home run. I guess I'm curious why you need tape on the bottom if you've got gravity doing the job for you. I, I kind of gave you all I got on that one. I, I, I don't. It's my best guesses so far. 1-0. Man, there have been some good performances by third baseman throughout college baseball this season, huh? Starting with Charlie Condon. Yeah, he's been okay. OPS above 1,800. That that plays. Line drive into left center for White. He's got a two-out single. He can just flat out hit. It's so spread out, but still has the ability. We've already seen him go deep tonight. He can hit balls out to right center field, so it really doesn't affect his power. But from a timing standpoint, he just he does not look off balance very often at all. Here's Hayden Travinsky, two hits tonight, including a home run. Get a new ball put in play. Charlie Condon is slugging 1,200. The OPS 1,800. Uh, Billy Amick at Tennessee is an OPS of 1,242. Ten home runs. Which, by the way, is still really good. <laughs> <laughs> Off the charts good. Check, man. I think he had 525. Five twenty-five. You got it right. Senior year set the SEC record. There's a club five twenty-five. Joe Bama's home ballpark. Dave Magadan had career four thirty-nine average. <laughs> career. That is off the plate. They roll all over it. K flag guy got a little early start. <laughs> That's a ball. <laughs> Here's the 2 2. Travinsky did not go. No doubles defense in the outfield. They are all playing just a couple of steps from the track. Field denied again, and it's ball four to Travinsky. Two on with two out. Go ahead run coming to the plate. It's Jared Jones, who is 0 for 3 with three strikeouts, but has yet to face McIntyre. The meat of the LSU order. Consists of White, Travinsky, and Jones. Very few to fear outside of this trio. 
1 and 0. Oh. And now third base up are coming in to chat with David Yold. Was it a clock violation or not? There'll be a pinch runner coming in for LSU. It's Jake Brown. Two on for Jones. Fastball misses low and in. And Jones has had a hard time with velocity, but if you hang a breaking ball right here, he can turn this thing around and give LSU the lead. In a home run off Jack Caglione last weekend on a changeup. He can spin some off speed around. Jones did not think that was a strike. He's got a good eye, one and one. 14 home runs last year for Jones, double digit home runs with 10 this season. Miss Lowe. Arkansas's closer is getting loose. That's Gabe Gackle. Laser to left field. Tommy White will be waved home. The throw, Edmondson comes into third, and we've got a one run game. And the big three in the heart of this LSU lineup goes single, walk, single. An impressive for Jones. It was 0 for 3 tonight with three strikeouts. Fastball that was the outer third right there. 6 5 at Jared Jones right there. Covers the outside part of the plate. Matt Hobbs will make the jog out. The pinch runner, Jake Brown, goes first to third because it's one enough that you can go get it. It was a first run allowed by McIntyre in his last five outings. And for a strike, start off Braswell. You know, it still gets me when a pitcher shakes, and instead of the catcher throwing down another sign, he just puts his right hand over towards his glove and types in the sign with pushes another button. Yeah. yeah. One and two. Forty seventh career outing for Will McIntyre. He's been a starter. He's been a reliever. Now he's trying to get him to the night. Swing and a miss by Braswell. Yeah, close. That's good math. Mm -hmm. I traveled with my abacus. Aloy looks at the first pitch low one and oh. Two and up. Two Hawaiians on this Arkansas roster, including backup second baseman Nolan Souza, who's from Honolulu. Played club ball for former Razorback Rick Nomura, who was starting second baseman in 2016. There's Nolan. He was the number one shortstop in the state. Those guys know where Hot is. Probably. I think you made that up. I don't think it's a real place. Ben McLaughlin.
Gidry's first pitch is a curveball that drops in for a strike. Gidry threw in the extra inning game against Florida, went for an inning and a third. Back to the curveball, nothing and two. The extra inning loss was really a game of inches for LSU. Had a pass ball on a third strike. Ended up putting a run across, eventually allowed Florida to tie it. Fastball for strike three. Jay Johnson said he had a couple sleepless nights last weekend, including after the run rule loss on Sunday. And he was up in the middle of the night staring at the sky, drinking a glass of orange juice at 4 o'clock in the morning. So the only good that came out of it is got his vitamin C. That was a 12 to 2 Florida win. And between that and the fact that he got ejected, he said, you know, I've never, I, I don't know if he's ever been ejected, by the way. First time at LSU. He said, the way we were playing, the fact that I wasn't out there, and then I was just sitting back in the clubhouse watching it on TV. Very frustrating experience. The Gators in that game on Sunday hit three home runs in the eighth inning. And part of a six home run outburst. They hit 12 runs on 13 hits. And every run came on thanks to a long ball. 3 0. It's an unforgiving league. Two. I mean, LSU goes to Mississippi State, loses two out of three. The Gators get up two out of three. Then you go to Arkansas, go home next weekend to get Vanderbilt for three, and then you go to Knoxville. Oh. <laughs> Four pitch walk. He puts Sprague Lot aboard, two on with one out. Given how Jay has managed his bullpen tonight, what lasting impact would Tonight's game, score holds, have on tomorrow. Um, well, they hadn't used that for her. And I, I think it'll be interesting to see how and when they use her over the course of the weekend. This is Kendall Diggs with two on. Curveball for a strike. So you get Holman tomorrow, you get Gage Jump in game three, and, and you've got Hurd wherever you want him in between. And however you want him, right? You want to bring him in in the high leverage situation in the fourth and let him go for a while, you can do that. Helmers has been throwing for a little while. Remember, parts of four or five innings. Whoa, this ball is absolutely launched. Three run home run for Kendall Diggs. One on one off the bat. Stop by to see the uh, bomb squad tomorrow on the way in, huh? Just say hi. Yeah. Real Check it in, guys. Probably be going by then. One of Wagner's two home runs in the year came tonight. Got tied up on that one inside. Nothing in two. If your mascot's a Razorback, can you can you grill pork before the game, or is that frowned upon? Celebrate all sorts of grilling here, whatever you need. <laughs> you 
fancy yourself a grill master. What is the most oh, exotic meat that. you put on there? Uh, not terribly exotic. They're throwing, they're throwing any sometimes. gator on there? No. Disappointed. Full count. I, mean, I wouldn't be against that. I, I don't. I roll into the high V meat market. Gator usually isn't one that's sitting there in Omaha, Nebraska. It may shock you, but it's not readily available. Well, just we throw some, some wings up. Yeah. This is the scene when the sun was out, they're getting riled up, and for good reason. Strike three. You know, I was talking pregame with assistant coach Nate Thompson, and at the risk of upsetting barbecue aficionados throughout the country, and Nate is a big Chiefs fan, as am I, and we were both at the Kansas City Buffalo game this year. That was the one with the throwback from Travis Kelsey that was taken off the board. The tailgating scene at Arrowhead Stadium is second to none. Little Flair handled by to Chavez Ravine tomorrow's twenty nine dollars. I think this is the better deal. I'm just saying. Her ball in for a strike to Mac Bingham. They're, they're not Dodger dogs but I have one before the game and, and the dogs aren't bad here either. So you, how many Jeff? We <laughs> <The> one. <laughs> I had one. OK. That's all I, I just, not accusing you anything. Look. Smelled really good. Mm -hmm. That is a 17th strikeout for LSU batters tonight. Seventh courtesy of McIntyre and Hagen Smith struck out 10. Second plate appearance for Ashton Larson. Can I share a secret with you? Sure. It won't think, be a secret anymore, but go ahead. I think Dodger dogs are overrated. I mean, it's more of an opinion. Well, I just wanted to keep that between us. <laughs> I didn't want people to get upset with me. It's the right place to do it. And the glass of orange juice tonight. Here's the 1 0 to Larson. Jay Johnson is a baseball lifer. This every pitch, he will remember every pitch from this game just like every pitch he's ever coached in in his life. And later tonight at the team hotel, whether it's 10 o'clock at night, 2 o'clock in the morning, he's going to rewind in his mind every move that he made or didn't make. And realistically, he'll understand that they were going against a guy with the best numbers in all of college baseball in Hagen Smith. But they were in it. All the way to the eighth. Touch Smith for back to back solo home runs in the fourth. Scratch another run across against McIntyre in the eighth. Payoff to Larson is spoiled into the Arkansas dugout.
the three run home run from Kendall Diggs in the eighth has allowed Arkansas to save Gackle. Well, at least for the time being, one out walk. Well, this was a swing, and this is a reaction. Off the bat, Diggs knows it's gone. Sixth of the year right there for Kendall Diggs. That leads this Arkansas team in an extended what was a 4-3 lead out to 7-3 as it stands right now. They play behind Larson at first. And in for a strike. Steven Milan. And Milam rips this one down the line. That is a fair ball. Larson on his way to third. They're going to wave. Now nope, pull it on the stop sign. And LSU's got two in scoring position with one out in the ninth. And now you turn the lineup over. Bet they pinch hit for Fry right here with a right hander out there. But Milam, the freshman, after the one out walk, the freshman, freshman. Larson comes in as a pinch hitter earlier. He walks, and Milam doubles down the right field line. Now LSU's got two in scoring position, just one out, and a leadoff spot coming up. This is Brady Neal. And after talking with the Arkansas staff pregame, the real stress comes once you get to that three hole. It's not just Tommy White, but that entire trio. Three home runs on the season for Neal. Two and all. Neal is 0 for his last 15 in conference play. 0 for 10 in the Mississippi State Series, 0 for 5 with a couple of Ks against Florida. Coming out of IMG Academy. They like that one, 2 and 1. Brady Neal was a 17th round pick of the Brewers in the 22 draft. Two and two. Has to have looked low. Where's McIntyre going out? Kicked all the way to the dugout, past White, and Lucky didn't go into the dugout. The wild pitch brings home Larson, and it puts Milam at third. Yeah, this one just stays down. You can see with that right. Right knee down, and you're expecting that breaking ball to come up a little bit higher. Hudson White was. Instead, it goes right under his glove, then it gets off the shin guard, kicks all the way in your right. They're lucky that didn't go into the dugout. Or if it does, it's a two run game right now. Instead, it's a 3 2 count. LSU's back within three. Full count to Neal. Got him up high. Two down. Eighth K for McIntyre in relief. And a big pitch right there, too. I mean, for McIntyre, you expect in a big spot, he's probably going to go to the slider instead to go back to the fastball. Elevate the fastball with the pinch hitter, Brady Neal. Now, McIntyre, since came up, coming on, has struck out eight. All eight of the outs that he has retired have been via the strikeout. Josh Pearson 0 for 4 tonight. Stephen Milam is a runner at third. Yeah. 
Game one of a three game series. Arkansas got a 10 strikeout performance from its ace, Hagan Smith. He's an out away from going to 5 0 on the year. 2 0. Again, runs away. Three balls and no strikes. Three and one. Back to the fastball, full count. And LSU down to its last strike. Payoff. Strike three call. 